You're watching Golden State Warriors today by Chat Sports. I am Jay Senior. The NBA Finals continue to roll on. So we're talking about this big news around the Steph Curry injury, but also on the back end of today's show. Did the Warriors make a mistake by not trading away some of the young assets on this roster for a superstar? Because right now against the Boston Celtics, they seem to be a horse short down 2-1 in the NBA Finals. We're getting to all of that on today's show. Make sure you subscribe if you love the dubs. So we start off with Steph Curry. Is he going to be available for Game 4 on Friday night? According to Shams Charania, he is. He said this on Twitter today. There's optimism on Warriors star Steph Curry and his status for Game 4 of the NBA Finals against Boston on Friday. Sources tell The Athletic, it appears Curry will not need an MRI. He has avoided major issue with his left foot, and he will attend Golden State's afternoon practice on Thursday. But there are a lot of concerns after the game because Steph Curry had said this. This injury feels like the same thing that happened to me against the Boston Celtics in the regular season, but not as bad. And we all know what happened between Steph and Marcus Smart. A borderline questionable play when Marcus Smart, a high-energy player, dove into Steph Curry. He hurt his foot and his ankle and missed a lot of time. And if it was the same injury, that would mean that Steph Curry would be hobbled and not the same player in the NBA Finals, which would be costly for Golden State. And if he is injured, and this is something that lingers, and he can't be the same offensive player, Big question marks and a lot of worries coming from the Bay Area around their superstar, the most selfless superstar in the history of the game. Steph Curry has been absolutely phenomenal throughout the NBA Finals through three games, and he's looking to secure his first Finals MVP in addition to two NBA MVPs and three championships, which would vault him into a completely different category. Look at the numbers here in almost 36 minutes played. 31 points per game, well above his finals averages previously. Two and a half steals as he's making a really good impact defensively. He's knocking down about 49% of his field goals. And Steph Curry has been Chef Curry. He's been cooking up in the kitchen. 49% shooter from downtown in three games of the NBA Finals. So that goes to show you that if Golden State does not have Steph, they are certainly entering precarious territory. What is your level of confidence in the Warriors right now, down 2-1 in the NBA Finals. Let us know in the comments section, and on the other side, we'll be talking about these trade rumors and trade candidates for Golden State. Scale it for me from 1 to 100. So I was listening to Colin Cowherd on his post-game show talking about Game 3 of the NBA Finals with their NBA insider from the volume, Jason Timpf. And the thought that Jason Timpf was talking about is the same thing that we talked about many months ago. Should the Warriors put their poker chips in the middle of the table and give up some of their young assets for a superstar right now to immediately chase a championship? Or should they build for the future while still trying to compete right now with Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Steph Curry? So the overarching question of today's show, did the Warriors mess this up? They're down 2-1 against Boston. Boston matches up favorably across the board against the Warriors. Defensively, length, athleticism, and they've been able to outlast Golden State in the NBA Finals in all of these games. So really, it looks as though right now, through three games, the dubs are one horse short. One star short of really being overwhelming on both ends and maybe winning another NBA championship. And I'm not ruling them out yet. I just want to have an open-minded conversation. The Warriors also have faded in the fourth quarter because they have an older team with this core as compared to the young upstart Celtics. The Warriors right now had and have assets to give up for a trade for a star player out there. And I understand the thought process from Joe Lacob, Bob Myers, Steve Kerr, as well as some of the players on this roster. They're trying to balance winning a ring right now and competing in this championship window, which is open right now, while also trying to build for the future. But no team over the course of NBA history has had young players, rookies, second-year players, immature guys as part of their championship rotation and been able to raise a Larry O'Brien trophy. Now you look at the Warriors player trade assets right now. They are loaded and armed with some of the best assets in a trade to make a trade for a superstar player in the NBA right now. Andrew Wiggins 
If you're trading for a superstar, you have to throw him in the deal to make the salary match. Jordan Poole, he could land a deal between 20 and $25 million this offseason. He would fetch a lot in a trade. 18 and a half points per game. One of the only players on this Warriors roster who can break a defense down off the dribble. And for Wiggins, an elite two-way player coming off his first All-Star appearance. There are a lot of unknowns when it comes to Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and James Wiseman. But all are in their early 20s. Kaminga, a teenager. He reminds me a lot of Jalen Brown, and I think he can become that in two or three years. But will that be too late as Steph, Clay, and Draymond age a little bit? Moses Moody gives you a lot shooting the basketball from deep, and James Wiseman has so much raw ability. That's why he was one of the consensus top high school players two years ago and the number two pick a couple years ago coming out of Memphis. But the point here being, right now, you decided not to trade for a star player. You didn't give up any of these guys. And Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and James Wiseman are not playing at all in this NBA Finals. And this is the talk that we had months ago. And a lot of people wrote me in the comments section, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to win championships. I'll worry about everything else later. Now, of course, when you're running a business, you're always looking ahead into the future. And yes, there's a little bit of a balance as well when it comes to trying to compete in the immediacy of the moment while also setting yourselves up nicely to win a championship down the road and still be competitive. But if I'm the Warriors, I don't want to waste these years of Steph, Clay, and Draymond because they are getting a little bit older. As for some players who the Warriors could give up by trading away some of those assets, I think that they could convince another team at the NBA level to send them a superstar if they gave them a collection. I'm not saying everybody, but a collection of some of these players like LeBron James and some other superstar players who are about to break down because some big time players could go to the Warriors if Bob Myers elects to trade some of these young pieces in the offseason if they don't win the NBA championship. But first, what do you watching right now? People tuned in from all across the world think that the Warriors should do. Elfort, you like the current construction of this team. T for you want the Warriors to make a trade. Let me know in the comment section right now. Let's say that because the Nets' future is in limbo right now with James Harden being dealt, Kyrie Irving potentially not returning. If Kevin Durant, who just signed a contract extension last summer, wants out, can you convince Brooklyn by trading away? and Andrew Wiggins, maybe a Jordan Poole, and one of Moses Moody, Jonathan Kaminga, or James Wiseman to the Brooklyn Nets, allow them to rebuild and then reunite Kevin Durant with the Golden State Warriors. I think that could be in play. I actually think it could be somewhat realistic. How about LeBron James? He was asked recently on the shop, which team left in the NBA playoffs do you want to play for the most? He said, by far and away, it's the Golden State Warriors, and I would love to play alongside Draymond Green. Anytime anybody talks smack to me, it gets me going. And that's what makes LeBron James a great player. L.A., I think, is desperate to have a bright future. And LeBron right now, he's 37 years old, turning 38 in December. He's still at the peak of his power. So you get him on this roster, maybe he helps you in this championship window over the next three years. And for the Lakers, you get to build a young, ascending roster with some really intriguing young talent. Bradley Beal, he has a player option. But his status has been looming over the nation's capital for a really long time. Has that player option. He could elect to opt out and become a free agent. If he opts in, then he becomes a trade target. For Washington, if they traded away Bradley Beal, who last year finished runner-up in the scoring race behind Steph Curry, wants to get dealt, again, the Warriors have a chest full of young assets to give up to allow the Washington Wizards to rebuild their team. So what's been the consistent theme here? Nets want to rebuild by trading away KD. Lakers want to rebuild by trading away the King. If the Wizards were to do the same, the Warriors can allow these teams to do that and they can compete for championships. Can the Warriors over the next couple of years and maybe go back to back, back to back to back to back? Let's ride. Miles Turner. We know the Warriors are a little bit bereft in that front court and a lot of fans really do like the game of Miles Turner. One of the best shot blockers at the NBA level over the last couple of years. I think he would add a lot to this Warriors team. And I might make the argument, shoot, if they traded for him last offseason, if they found a way to bring him in, maybe the Warriors would be in a better position. They've been out physical and out-fought and outplayed in the front court by Robert Williams and Al Horford throughout the NBA Finals so far. And Robert Williams was a menace in Game 3, a straight-up game-changer. Does that happen if you have more 
of a prototypical center and a guy who's a little bit better than Kevon Looney. Looney, to me, perfect glue guy, backup center. He's not a starter. Lastly, DeAndre Ayton. Maybe one of the more fascinating trade assets in the league right now if he doesn't become a free agent or if there's a sign-in trade that takes place. You put him on this Warriors roster, my goodness, they would be so dangerous on both ends of the floor. And a lot of people have ridiculed and ripped DeAndre Ayton because he has these lapses in games offensively. Playing on this Warriors team, he wouldn't have to worry about that. He would get so many alley-oop opportunities and open looks down low because of the floor spacing that takes place on the Warriors floor when they're clicking, when they're humming, with all of the movement, backdoor cuts, screen and rolls, pick and pops, and all that. And then defensively, he'd be able to anchor this defense on the low block alongside Draymond Green, who's been outsized by Robert Williams and Al Horford throughout the finals up to this point. That right there, folks, five superstars who the Warriors could trade for this offseason if they flame out in the NBA Finals and they want to chase the Larry OB. I want you to name a superstar player you want the Warriors to target down in the comment section right now.